Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is just one of over 80 episodes we release monthly. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud, which comes at a considerable expense. To help cover these costs, you might hear some advertisements throughout this episode. While we retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may encounter modern ads. We promise to keep these ads to a minimum and try to place them where you would have originally heard them when they aired. If you prefer an ad-free experience, you can support us by becoming a member on our Patreon page. Go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, that's otrwesterns.com slash donate for more information. I want to emphasize that we're committed to providing this content to you for free, but also want to be transparent about the financial realities of producing these shows. As a reminder, if you're listening to this episode on a service you pay for, please know that they do not support this podcast in any way, and the ads will be in this episode. Now, let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is March 15th, 1948, and the title is Melissa Downs' Nephew. Hope you enjoy, and again, thanks for listening. horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? Hey! The stagecoach from St. Louis rumbled along the Oberlin Trail toward Frontier Town. Dan Reed, young nephew of the Lone Ranger, had entered the stage at Milltown, 50 miles west of Frontier Town. The only other passenger inside the coach was an elderly woman who smiled in a friendly manner at the boy who sat opposite. Finally, she spoke. Goodness me. These stages ride terrible rough. Don't be funny. Yes, am I was wondering why you didn't come out here by train. Union Pacific goes to Frontier Town. Well, I'll tell you. We older folk don't take too well to new inventions. I'm just a little scary about those trains, to tell the truth. Golly, there's nothing to be afraid of, ma'am. I like to ride the train. Only it doesn't go through Milltown, so I had to take this stage. What's your name? Oh, my name's Dan Reed. 
I stay with friends outside of Frontier Town. I see. I'm Melissa yeah. Downs. Uh, Miss Melissa Downs. But everybody back where I live calls me Auntie Downs. Oh. I've taught school all my life. Finally retired this past year. Uh, how far west are you going, Miss Downs? To Frontier yeah. Town, uh, Dan. Yeah. Now, see here. If you want to make me feel at home, just call me Auntie, like I'm used to. Will you? All right, Auntie Downs. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. I've been kind of lonesome on this trip. And it does me good to have a friendly youngster like you to talk to. I hope we'll be friends in Frontier Town. Oh, sure. Uh, do you know anyone there? I have a nephew out there. His name is Jim Conway. I've had letters from him. Jim says he owns a mine and is doing right well. So I'm planning to surprise him. I see. I don't know of anyone by that name in Frontier Town. But there's a lot of people there I don't know. Do you know of a place where I might stay until I get in touch with Jim? Oh, yes, sir. You can stop at Mother Willard's rooming house. It's a nice place to stay. Then I'll go there. Mother Willard knows just about everyone. She ought to know your nephew. That's fine. Oh, I'm certainly lucky to meet up with you, Dan. You've been a great help. I'll be glad to help you in any way I can, Annie Downs. Uh... We'll soon be in town, and I'll take you to the rooming house. Thanks, Dan. You're a mighty nice boy. Be sure to come and see me often, won't you? Yes, I will. And if Mother Willard doesn't know your nephew, well, maybe I can find out where he is for you. I'll bet he'll be awfully glad to see you. I hope so. I'm the only living relative he's got, and I think we should be together. Oh, I'm beginning to get excited now that I'm almost there. Jim must be about uh, 25 now. And I can keep house for him if he wants me to stay. Oh, I'm sure he'll want you to stay. He's lucky to have a nice aunt like you. <laughs> My goodness, Dan. You certainly know how to compliment a lady. <laughs> I want Jim and you to be friends, too. Oh, I just can't wait to meet him. When the stage arrived in Frontier Town, Dan carried Miss Down's suitcase and walked with her to Mother Willard's rooming house. After introducing the two women, Dan asked, Mother Willard, do you happen to know a man by the name of Jim Conway here in Frontier Town? No, Dan, oh, somehow that name Conway has a familiar ring to it. But for the life of me, I can't seem to connect it with anyone I know here. Oh, that's too bad. I, I was hoping you'd know Jim. Well, don't worry, Annie. We'll find your nephew. Someone in town is sure to know him. Dan's right, Miss Downs. You just leave it to him. Daniel's right smart at doing things for folks. Well, thank you, Mother Willard. I'll take you to your room, Miss Down. And when Daniel finds out anything, he can come here to tell you. Yes, I'll do that. I have to go now. My horse is at the livery stable. I have a long ride ahead of me. I'll be seeing you soon, Annie Downs. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye Daniel. Daniel. Later that afternoon, Dan arrived at the camp, which he shared with Tonto and the Lone Ranger in the enchanted hills northeast of Frontier Town. Oh, oh, Victor. Oh, boy. Oh, oh stay, boy. Hello, Dan. How was your trip to Milltown? Oh, just fine, sir. I delivered the note to the sheriff there. Good. You'd be glad to know the outlaw Miller's in custody. Oh, how, Dan? Be glad to see you back. I'm glad to get back, Tonto. I met a nice old lady on the stage. She's on her way out to meet her nephew. But well, she doesn't know where to find him. And where is she staying? With Mother Willard's rooming house in Frontier Town. I see. She's awfully nice and friendly. She used to teach school, and her name is Miss Downs. I've never heard of anyone by that name in town. Oh, oh, her nephew's name isn't Downs. His name is Jim Conway. She said he was about 25 years old and owned a mine out here somewhere. Me never hear of Jim Conway. She should have written to him that she was coming. Then he could have met her at the stage stop. Well, she wants to surprise him. Oh, I see. But how does she expect to find him? Well, just by asking people, I guess. Golly, if he owns a mine near here, a lot of people ought to know him. Yes, that's true. The easiest way is to go to the mine claims office and look in the registry. Strange we haven't heard of him. Isn't that right? We ride to town tomorrow and ask at the claims office, Dan. All right. I hope I can find Jim for. If we get any information at the claims office, I'll go right to the rooming house and tell him. Ah. You come now, we eat supper. It's all ready. <laughs> The following morning, Tonto and Dan went to the claims office in Frontier Town. They were told that no claim had been filed by Jim Conway. Then Dan went to inquire at the store while Tonto went into the Bright Lights Cafe. I was here when he came in before, and I told him about it. 
about it then. <laughs> what do you want, Indian? Well, you keep bar. You know plenty people. Uh, sure. Who are you looking for? Maybe I can help you. I mean, look for a fella named Jim Conway. Oh, Jim Conway? Huh. Uh. Nope. Never met up with anyone here by that name. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Hey, Blackie. What's up, Joe? Come here a minute. Yeah. All right. Did you see that Indian who just went out? Yeah, what about him? Thought you might like to know. He just asked if I knew Jim Conway. He did, huh? Thanks for the tip, Joe. I'll mosey out and see where he goes. Maybe that Indian's just too curious for his own good. Tonto met Dan at the hitch rack, and the two of them rode back to the Lone Ranger's camp in the hills. Later that day, the man called Blackie reined up before a shack along the river several miles east of the Lone Ranger's camp. Hold there. Hold, hold. Hi, Blackie. What's new in town? Hey, I heard something, Jim. An Indian came into the cafe asking about you. Asking about me? How'd he get my name? Sure, darn if I know. Joe the barkeep told him he didn't know you. I followed the Indian out of the cafe. Then what? Well, he met a kid. The two of them took the redskin trail toward the Enchanted Hills. There's one thing I'm sure of, Jim. What's that? It's the same Indian who was with that mask, hombre, who captured Miller two weeks ago. What? What's that you say? Yeah, I'm positive, Jim. Miller must have said that I took over the gang. Nah, you'll never get me to believe that. Miller wouldn't talk no matter what they did to him. He'll get about five years in territorial, and he'll expect you to have a good, strong gang ready for him when he gets out. Mm. I'd sure like to know how that masked hombre got my name in. Nobody in the gang knew my full name but you and Lou. And Joe the barkeep. But he'd never tell anybody. And you know I wouldn't. If I thought you would, Blackie, you'd be mighty sorry. Uh, take it easy, Jim. No use of us getting head up about each other. We gotta plan what to do. Yeah, that's right. That masked man's smarter than I thought. He's plenty smart. You can count on that. But I still can't figure out how he... Get my horse ready, Black. Yeah? We're going to ride out along Redskin Trail toward the Enchanted Hills and do a little snooping. We got to figure out some way to outsmart that masked hombre before he pulls a fast one on us like he did on Lou Miller. That afternoon, Dan Reed returned to Frontier Town and went to Mother Willard's rooming house to visit Melissa Downs. He sat in the living room talking to Miss Downs and Mother Willard. Golly, any Downs we've asked all over town, but no one seems to have heard of your nephew. That's mighty strange. I, I just can't understand it. Are you sure it was Frontier Town he mentioned in his letters, Miss Downs? Oh, yes. There's no mistake about that. What does he look like, ma'am? Now, Dan, I, I couldn't rightly say... The last time I saw him back in St. Louis, before his folks brought him west, he was only six years old. But I do recall one thing, a birthmark on his right temple. A birthmark? Yes. It was like a small red raspberry. The doctor said it would never go away. Well, I never saw anyone around here with a mark like that, I'm sure. I just don't know what to do. Oh, I was foolish not to let Jim know I was coming. Well... <laughs> Don't worry, Annie Downs. If Jim Conway's in this territory, we'll find him for you somehow. Oh, Dan, if you only could. When Dan and his friends set out to do something, it usually gets done. You can take my word for that. Oh, thanks, Mother Willard. Well, I'll leave now. I, I want to get back before it gets dark. I'll drop by as soon as we get any news. Bye. Bye. <laughs> It was almost dusk as Blackie and Jim Conway rode along the Red Skin Trail toward the Enchanted Hills. They moved along slowly, carefully observing the landscape. Suddenly, Jim spoke. I think I hear somebody galloping up the trail. I don't hear anything. Can't see back down the trail because of the turn. It... Yeah, I hear him now. Let's pull off behind those boulders, quick. Get up. Get up there. Oh, there. Oh, there. Oh, there. Can you see him? Yeah. Just one horseman coming around. Hey, Jim. That's the kid. The one who was with that Indian. You sure? Positive. I remember that horse of his. We'll ask that maverick a few questions. 
Get your gun out. Yeah, get up there. Come on. Rain up, that kid. We got your covered button. Oh, hold it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right, kid. We want to ask you a few questions. Now, this is a hold-up. I haven't anything to give you. Well, it isn't exactly a hold-up. Like he says, we want to ask you a few questions. Well, what is it you want to know? Hey, I bet your name is Jim Conway. <laughs> Smart button, aren't you? What gave you that idea? That birthmark on your right temple. Hey, Jim, we even knew about that. They got you tabbed, all right. But, Mr. Conway, you don't understand. Shut up! Another word out of you and I'll plug you. You're coming with us, kid. And like Blackie says, keep your mouth shut or you'll get a bullet. Now get going. Get up Come on, Victor. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Continue our story. Blackie and Jim threatened Dan with their guns and ordered him to ride with them. Soon they arrived at the hideout. All right, kid. Go on into the shack. Yes, sir. Well, where'd you pick up the button? Hi, right, Bird. Jim and me's got some business with this snooping kid. Sit down, you. Oh, look, Shut up did... till we tell you to talk. Bert, where are the rest of them in? The other shack, Jim. Good. You go join them. Tell them we might have to pull stakes by morning, so be ready. No, all right. Now, kid, start talking. How'd that masked hombre find out about me, my name and all? Then you are Jim Conway, and you're an outlaw. Oh, golly. <laughs> Talks like he didn't know. I didn't, honest. Gosh, if Annie Downs finds what? out about this, it'll... Well, well, Wait so... a minute. Who did you say? That nice old lady was at the rooming house in Frontier Town. Miss Melissa Downs, your aunt from St. Louis. What? I met her on the stage. She said she was coming here to live with you. But you owned a mine out here. <laughs> That's a hot one. Shut up, you. Hey, what's come over you? None of your business. Uh... Now, look, kid. Do you mean to tell me Aunt Melissa's really in town looking for me? Yes, sir, she is. She's awfully nice and talks about you all the time. That's why I was asking about you around town. And the Indian doesn't know I'm Jim? No. Tana was just trying to help me find you for Annie Downs. What's your name, kid? Well, Dan Reed, sir, I... I wish now I hadn't found you. I don't know what to tell her. You aren't going to tell anyone anything. Put up that gun, Blackie. There's nothing doing, Jim. What's more, you're going to drop your gun on the floor right now. Drop it. Now, look here, drop you... Drop it, All right. Now, get some cord and tie that kid up tight. What's got into you, Blackie? The kid just told us he, he was... He knows about the gang now. And he can't go back to town talking... Tie him up and be quick about it. Then I'll call Bert and we'll tie you up, Conway. If you go soft over this kid and that aunt of yours, no tell him what you'll do. Now get busy. After tying up Dan and Jim, the two outlaws went to the other cabin, leaving them alone. Look, kid, I... I don't know what made the old lady decide to come out here, but it's a little... She said you were only relative and that you'd written to her and everything. Yeah, that's right, I did. I, well, I sort of got a hankering to have somebody to tie to. So I began writing to her sort of regular. Of course, I couldn't tell her I was... If, but if she knew you were an outlaw, she'd feel awful. Yeah, I reckon she would at that. Uh, I'd hate to think of hurting poor Aunt Melissa... She was my mother's only sister. I see. Here, Victor, my horse is still out there. Yeah, but what good will that do? You'll see. Victor! 
Get the Lone Ranger. Go on, Victor. Get the Lone Ranger. <laughs> As the evening wore on, the Lone Ranger and Tonto became increasingly worried about Dan Reed. The moon had come out full, and they glanced down Red Skin Trail from time to time, hoping to see him coming. Finally, the Lone Ranger spoke. Tonto, Dan wouldn't stay this late at Mother Willard's. That's right. We better get the horses and ride into town. Something might have happened to him. Me worried too, Kimasabi. No use waiting here any longer. Here, Silver. Here, Scout. Could be that he doesn't realize how late it is. I think that... Wait, listen. Sounds like Victor coming now. Yes. Dan's pushing him pretty hard. Now me see him coming along trail. Him. Victor have empty saddle, Kimasabi. Whoa, Victor, whoa. Steady, fella. Easy. Otto, I believe Dan sent Victor here to the camp. Dan needs our help. We backtrack on Victor. It bright moonlight. All right, let's get going. Steady, Victor. Uh, uh, we'll take Victor back with us. Come on, Victor. Come on, get him up. Come on. Following Victor's back trail was difficult, and it was almost dawn before the Lone Ranger and Tonto were on the trail that approached the outlaw shacks. The Lone Ranger called a halt. Oh, Silver. Oh, 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 Tonto, the place where Dan is waiting must be up the river a short way. Ah. He wouldn't be away up here if someone hadn't forced him to come. He must be held captive for some reason. Not right. We'll leave this trail, circle around, and come in from the opposite direction. Might be someone watching the trail from this side. Uh, that's a good idea. All right. Come on, Silver. Victor, get him up, Scout. Meantime, in the shack, Dan and Jim had slept very little. Dan stirred, then spoke cautiously. Mr. Conway, are you awake? Yeah. These cords are too tight for letting me sleep, kid. Golly, I... I guess my horse didn't get to the Lone Ranger... It's almost morning. Even if he did, it's not so easy backtracking in the moonlight, kid. In fact, I don't expect you... Dan. Jim, look. At the window. Me and here, sir, we're tied up. I'll come in. I knew he'd come. Well, I'll be doggone. He did get here. I knew he would. Dan, are you all right? Yes, sir. But these cords hurt something awful. Yeah, I'll cut them. Wait just a minute. All right. I'll get this one. And this one. There. Oh, gee, that feels better. Uh, this is Jim Conway, sir. Jim Conway? Well, yeah, I'll cut your cords too, Jim. Just a minute now. Turn just a little more this way. There you are. Uh, thanks, mister. Well, I guess well, I the... nice job, Ray. Hold it, mister, and reach. Very well. I should have closed the door behind me. <laughs> too late now. Well, hey! <laughs> we got you cold, mister. We figured when that kid's horse got away, the Lone Ranger might show up, so we played dumb and didn't guard the trail. I see. This way, we can get rid of several snoopers at once. Jim Conway was getting too big for his boots as head of the gang anyway. Jim Conway, head of the gang? That's right, I was, for a little while. I took over after Miller got taken, but we didn't pull any more jobs. <laughs> You'll hang with the rest if you ever get cut alive, which you want. What's up, Blackie? We... The mask, yeah, keep your gun on him, Bert. <laughs> I'll make them squirm. First, I'll plug the kid for button in. No, and... no, don't! Oh. Oh, my leg! Jim! Oh. Jim shot him. He took the bullet black he meant for me. Yeah, and I'll plug that mask man for getting black him. Uh, oh. You never learned, do you, Jim? Hey, the other two, they'll get you. They're coming now. They'll get... You all right? You all right? Yes, Tonto. So is Dan. I'm going to... Come on, over two outlaws. But then not bother us now. Them hurt. Good. We'll attend to the wounded, then we'll take them to Frontier Town. We'll see about Jim first. So that Jim Conway. Yes, sir. He saved my life just now. Look, I... Don't let Aunt Melissa know about it. Don't worry, don't worry, Jim. We'll fix your wound and get you back to town. You go to jail, but we'll try to get you a light sentence for what you did for Dan. Your aunt need not know, Jim. After Tonto, Dan, and the Lone Ranger had taken the outlaws into Frontier Town, Doc Drummond fixed their wounds. Then the outlaws were turned over to Sheriff Taylor. 
After conferring with the sheriff, the Lone Ranger and Dan, accompanied by Jim Conway, went to Mother Willard's rooming house. Can you make it, Jim? Yes. I'm lucky it's just a shoulder wound. She'll be surprised. Here, I'll help you, Jim. No, no, never mind. I'll be all right. I hope they're home. Land's sakes, it's Dan and his mass friend. And this is Jim Conway, Mother Willard. Well, of all things, come in. <laughs> Melissa, Melissa, he's come. He's here. You mean, you mean, you mean Jim's here? This is Jim, Eddie Down. Aunt Melissa. Jim. Oh, Jim, I'm so glad. I... Oh, but the bandage and, and the mask, man, I, I don't understand. Forget why... the mask, Miss Downs. I'm a friend of Jim's. Oh, don't worry about him, Melissa. He's our friend, too. Oh. Aunt Melissa, I, I'm sorry to tell you this, but I, I'll have to go away for a while. Go away? Yes, but if Mother Willard will keep you here, I have some money, my own money, that'll pay your keep till I come back. Then we'll stay together. Jim helped us round up a gang of outlaws, and he saved Dan's life. We're very proud of him. I knew Jim was that kind of a man, mister. Jim... When you come back, I'll be waiting for you. Then I'll keep house for you. We have to leave now. Goodbye, Aunt Melissa. You'll find the money in a bank account in your name. I'll arrange it before I leave. Goodbye. Adios. Come, Jim. Dan. Goodbye. 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 Oh, I... I'm sorry Jim has to leave on business, but... I can wait. You can be sure Jim's an all right boy. I'm so glad... Who is that masked friend of Dan? Oh, folks around Frontier Town know him as the Lone Ranger. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.